produces a charge. Maybe that's bad. So each individual enzyme active site is going to be a mix of different kinds of groups, some of which must be protonated, some of which must be deprotonated, and the exact mix of groups will dictate a particular profile with a so-called pH optimum for trypsin. It's a little above 7. Not surprisingly, the pH profiles of enzymes are adapted to the environment they work in. Trypsin works in the intestinal tract, not in the stomach, but like in the small intestine. Guess what? That's the pH of that, that zone of the digestive tract. Pepsin does a similar job in the stomach. Guess what? It's adapted to the acidic environment of the stomach. Its pH optimal is way down here below 2. So um, the, you can titrate groups on the protein that may affect the, the pH profile. Sometimes the substrate, too, could carry a charge, like this one. Maybe at a really high pH, that guy disappears. Maybe it's not all on the substrate, uh, not all on the enzyme, but on the substrate, you've got titratable groups. But typically, enzymes are only active over a certain And the pH, if you want to get fancy about it, the pH changes can affect two things. One, it might affect how tightly the substrate binds. That would be affecting the KM, in other words, the binding strength. Uh, also could be that there's some group on the enzyme that's involved not in substrate docking, but in attacking the, the substrate to convert it to product. This step in here might be pH sensitive, so you would see that as a Vmax effect. We're not getting that fancy here, we're just looking at observed velocities.